is four years worth of growth. I did my twist out two days ago. I went to the pool and I had to retwist the front and add a little bit of moisture, of course. Wow, how time has flown. Four years has just passed by, just like that. But I've managed to learn so much. I've been through high times, I've been through low times, I've been through times I just wanted to cut my hair off. I expressed that to you guys. I've been through times where I've just loved my hair. I've just been loving it. And I feel like I'm at that place right now where I'm just appreciating it more and more each day. For those of you who don't know, I'm no longer living in England. I live in Iceland now. I am here right now just to give you a brief update so in case you're wondering where have you been where have you been this is where i've been just been you know working a lot it's really really hard to find the time but i'm trying i'm really really trying i've got quite a few videos to edit quite a few so be patient with me and i will come through with those videos and eventually a schedule but the best thing to do is just keep your notifications on so you just don't miss stuff i am just loving this lighting right now i don't have my artificial lights with me but it's okay the daylight is blessing me and i just can't wait until we get the midnight sun because then i'll be able to film at midnight happy Four year anniversary to myself. Happy four year natural anniversary. The first thing I've learned is to accept myself. I've been saying this ever since I moved here that every single day I've been learning to accept myself more and more and I feel like it's really helping me in different respects and I just love that. So yes, natural hair has learned, helped me to accept myself and I think once you accept yourself, you accept different features about yourself and it just works in your favor. The second thing I've learned is that natural hair is a gift. A lot of women have felt, or even, I don't know about men, but a lot of women have felt that um, they have been struck with, they have been stricken with bad hair, with coarse hair, with nappy hair. And there's something about nappy hair that's like, part of that word is like positive, the other part is negative. Now I'm just talking about it in a negative way. Like, you know, a lot of people have been, you know, disappointed that in God that for giving them bad hair but the way I see it is the lesson I've learned is that natural hair is a gift and it's good hair. The third thing I've learned is a bit funny it's just that natural hair is like a hat. So I was out driving um, actually so I was out doing the golden circle route with some of my friends who had come to visit the country and we were you know, hanging out, doing a little bit of driving, road trip, and we were outside in the cold, and I did not feel cold on my head. And one of them asked me, you know, I'm surprised you, you're not wearing a hat. My head was uncovered, all I had was my scarf and, you know, gloves and jacket, no hat. But natural hair is kind of like a hat. Some people have used it as an abusive word, like, oh, hair, 
hair hat or hat hair. Just recent, just last week I got that horrible comment on my video and I just, you know, I thought it was ridiculous. Well, I was wearing a wig, but it's like still you don't have the right to call somebody a hair hat or hat hair or whatever, however you say it. But natural hair is like a hat, like it's so warm, it's so insulating, it's so amazing. No wonder why um, sheeps are always like shaved off for their wool because their hair keeps them super warm and humans want that warm um, but you can't have my hair you can't take my hair and use it to warm you up sorry so yeah natural hair keeps us warm it keeps us insulated and like warm in the winter the fourth thing i've learned is natural hair displays an inner beauty in the physical form now once you start gaining that confidence and that contentment in yourself it radiates from the inside out and I feel like the confidence you have when you wear your hair, um, you know, can be seen. You stand up with your hair tall. It's taken a lot of women, a lot of, you know, convincing and encouragement, enticing by, you know, these, you know, amazing styles just to, for them to feel the confidence to wear theirs. But I think once you accept yourself at a basic level, you can build that up and, you know, eventually just enjoy it so much that it just radiates through you. And yes, your hair just responds in such a nice way that, you know, yeah, I'm being taken care of. Let me, let me look nice today. Yeah, that sounds kind of weird that your hair would have a personality, but yeah. The fifth thing I've learned is that natural hair is individual. Not all hair behaves in the same way, so we cannot expect the same results for everybody. Yes, that is point number five. The sixth thing I learned is that what I learned when I was younger was wrong. Afro hair is bad hair. I remember one time I was walking with my hair puffy and somebody shouted at me from across the street, since when did it become abnormal to have an afro? I think it was more acceptable for men to do it and less acceptable for women. What you have, what you've been given naturally is good, but if you're not naturally straight, then nobody can tell you that, hey, your hair is bad hair. It should be straight. If a person naturally has straight hair, then yes, the hair should be straight. And yes, their hair is good. Hair. We all have individual hair, we all have different textures, and the texture you have is good hair. So yeah, it can't be said as a general statement that straight hair is the best hair. The seventh thing I've learned is that kinky hair is good hair. And I think I'm not going to expand on this too much because I kind of said it in the last point, it is what it is. Kinky hair is good hair. The eighth thing I've learned is to challenge any negativity towards it. Now, it may not necessarily be negativity from somebody else because I don't want to go out looking for a fight or looking for somebody to contest, but it's an internal thing. If I start to feel that, oh my gosh, I cannot wear this hair to this wedding or I cannot wear this hair to this party or this event or this day, then I've taught myself to challenge that negativity and to channel it into finding something that would make me feel comfortable. So yeah, challenging the negativity towards natural hair and channeling positivity instead. Number nine, natural hair is acceptable. I am not causing offense. The 10th thing, my hair is a crown. So it's not only a hat and something protective, it's also a crown that you wear with pride and honor. 11. I am well within my rights to wear my natural hair to work. After all, it did grow on my head. Number 12. I can go a whole year without braiding. Or weaves, or wigs. That's just the way it's been for me. I've just gone without wigs, weaves, braiding uh, for so long that this is just, it is what it is. Number 13. Natural hair comes first. So before I go to weaves, wigs, braiding, and all other kinds of styles, I always think, what can I do with my natural hair first? That is my first thought. The 14th thing I've learned is to walk with my head held high. The 15th thing I've learned is what natural hairstyles work and suit me. This has been a journey of exploration, repetition, fails, wins, experiments, what works within short time frames, what works last minute. 16. Simple styles. I have learned how to just master the art of simplicity, simple styles, and I really enjoy that. I just think if you do something really simple well, then it can just work for you and you can still get good results. Your hair will flourish, your hair will grow, 
and I love that. The 17th thing I've learned is what my holy grail products are, natural products are. Shea butter, coconut oil, keeping it simple once again. Number 18, I've learned how to avoid heat damage by simply just not using heat. I've not straightened my hair simply because I just don't really have a desire to. I feel like if I straighten my hair, the next day it's probably gonna be all puffy or I'll completely ruin my hair texture. I just don't really see why I would need to straighten my hair. Maybe to actually have a really nice um, bun, maybe then I would try and straighten it, but I'm not sure how my hair would look down and straight because it's still not that long. But yeah, I've learned to avoid heat damage. Number 19, I've learned not to compare my journey to others. I said this in an earlier point, not all hair types are the same and this is just about the journey. Don't base your journey on somebody else's journey. I think I've done quite a good job on just staying focused and not comparing my hair. I mean, it was never really about length or growth or any of that to me. This was all a journey of self-acceptance and that has been the core of my journey, the core of my ethos. It's just about self-acceptance, literally that is it. I just wanna encourage you guys, don't compare your journey to other people's. As long as you're getting that healthy hair, healthy hair growth, some progress, then I think you're good. Number 20, I've learned not to compare my hair to others. I've talked about the journey, I've talked about the hair type, and now I'm just talking about your hair. Just don't compare your hair to others. Learn to love your hair individually and you'll be happy. Number 21, never compare kinky hair to straight hair. They are completely different. They are two completely different ballparks. Don't compare kinky hair to straight hair. They are just so different. Natural hair isn't a chore, it's an honor. Number 23, weaves aren't really for me. I just find them a bit irritating and a bit dangerous, so I just kind of stay away from them. I think once you've gotten so used to your natural hair, many hairstyles just become really irritating. I think if you've grown up black, <laughs> if you've grown up black, you've probably, you know, had your hair in all kinds of different hairstyles that have been so tight and so like aggravating to your scalp that it's almost become normal to feel pain but i say no to the pain i say yes to my natural hair number 24 be careful with who you let touch your hair not everybody is trustworthy not everybody has your best interests at heart not everybody listens to your pain or even feels your pain, so be careful. Number 25, moisturized hair is happier than dry hair. I think we all know that. Number 26, dry hair is a no-no and it doesn't feel good either. Number 27, do not be afraid to lose a few centimeters for the sake of healthier, happier hair. It's not always about length. The 28th thing I've learned is just simple African pride. It comes along with the contentment accepting yourself, the parts of you that are just a natural component. I'm African. Hey, this means I have African hair. This means I embrace my culture. This means I embrace my hair. It's not a really pride pride thing. It's just kind of like, ah, this is who I am, that's it. I realized my natural hair demonstrates my roots. Number 29, my natural hair is desirable. It is something to be desired and not something to just not want. Number 30, sometimes people are very curious and you just have to explain things to them. Number 31, yes, it's okay to go swimming. Your hair may get wet, but it will survive. Number 32, I like straight hair, I really do, but I don't need it to feel beautiful. Number 33, a headscarf is like a shield of protection. I can't go without it. I need my headscarf, I need my turban, I need something on my head at night. Number 34, I don't need to shampoo as often as I thought. Number 35, however, when I do shampoo alone without conditioning, it gives me a super tight kinky twist, which I discovered by running out of conditioner. Number 36, I'm happy I never focused on curl pattern. And once again, I would encourage you not to focus on curl pattern. Number 37, sometimes my hair can be exhausted from the weather, the storms, <laughs> the rain, the snow, and water and oil can often bring it back to life. Number 38, I will never be somebody who judges another person for relaxing their hair. Sometimes it is genuinely just a preference. However, relaxed hair to me is not sustainable, so I personally 
choose not to do it but even if I did decide to do it I would always go back to natural number 39 comb when wet but not in the shower now I did mention only combing my hair when wet but I just never do it in the shower because I don't want to have to deal with hair all over the floor I'd rather just deal with it on the bathroom floor rather than in the shower basin comb it individually as I do each individual twist I'm saving time and I think I'm saving my hair as well so number 40 just to sum it all up once you learn to love your natural hair there is a great sense of freedom and contentment so I'd encourage you get on that journey and for me like I said it's just been a journey of self-acceptance of just finding a way that works for me it's not been about who how long can my hair get it's not been about length it's not even been that much about products it's just been about hey god gave me this hair how am i gonna steward it how am i gonna take care of it how am i gonna deal with it how am i gonna find a way to make it work because i just feel like if god gave you something if you naturally have something then you should try to love it you should do your best to make it work a lot of these styles out there are just not exactly sustainable but when you take care of something that you have and you kind of make it work then that just makes the process of of um i don't even know how to put this okay let me flip it around white people they don't go out and get kinky hair why do we need to go out and get straight hair obviously it's a bit maybe a bit more difficult for them to get kinky hair but why can't we as black people accept our afro hair not that we have to wear it constantly i mean there's weaves there's wigs there's all that out there that i've talked about but don't really that are not really my preference but there's all those other options as a foundation we should just first love our hair and not run to with wigs and weaves just because we hate our hair those things are fine if you really love them but start from the inside and start with what you have already yeah <laughs> i hope i'm ending in a good way but yeah, I hope you've enjoyed this video. Thank you so much for watching. Please leave in the comments the, co the points that you could relate to and things that you've learned along your natural hair journey. Has it been one year for you, two years for you, three years for you, four years for you, maybe five or maybe even 10? Please leave that in the comments. I'm curious to know how long you've been on your natural hair journey. Mine has been four. This is my four year natural anniversary, and I'm celebrating it with this video and with sharing these points. Um, so yeah just leave your comments I'll be curious to know like I said and I'm sure other people would like to know as well and I will see you in my next video make sure you turn on your notifications so you know exactly when I've uploaded a video and make sure you are following me on all my social medias because I am sharing there I am trying to keep you updated so please don't miss out when I share and yes you're always free to ask me questions i'm trying my best to respond i'm trying my best to reply about you know life in iceland or maybe even like natural hair or hair care things like that or things that are kind of related to my videos i do get a lot of questions about that stuff it's a beautiful day outside i need to go if you have not subscribed yet please do hit that subscribe button it means oh what it means a lot to me it does mean a lot to me. And I'll see you in my next one. I'm signing out. Bye.